You know, often when we think about forests, we think of the color green, don't we? Even though most of the year, the leaves are off the trees. But what about that special time of the year that we call fall or autumn? Then we see a whole bunch of colors. Why is it that trees change colors? Why don't they all change the same color? Why do they change colors at different times? Let's take a look at our forest's more colorful side on this episode of Believe It or Not. During the growing season, most trees in the lake states are either emerald green or lime green or olive green most of the season. Yeah, that's true. And, and, and when they're growing and they're healthy, we can pretty much enjoy that green from May through September. But then, ha! Ah! When the days start getting shorter in late August and September, things start to change. And as the season rolls toward October, many trees really start to show off. Some turn red or orange, yellow or even purple. Sometimes they show off many colors at once. The dormancy process actually begins in midsummer as buds are set for the next year. Above ground growth stops and food storage begins. But most of this you can't see. Now, when the forests across the landscape begin to change color, usually about the same time, it can get really pretty out there. In fact, it's become a popular tourist destination for leaf peepers. Those are the folks that like to tour around and take pictures and watch the colors change. And drink pumpkin spice lattes. Yeah, now Georgia, let's not tease those folks too much. When a leaf changes from green to another color, a lot's going on in the leaf and the entire tree and it all comes down to chemistry. Chemistry? Oh, I was never very good at chemistry. What has that got to do with trees and leaves? Well, you know, you remember how when leaves are green, they're green because of? Oh, chlorophyll. chlorophyll. Yeah. That's right. And chlorophyll is crucial for the tree to be able to create its own food or mm -hmm. sugars through photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. I bet you've heard about that before. But if the tree needs sunlight as a primary ingredient for photosynthesis, and our days start getting shorter in the fall, it gets harder for the trees to make enough food to grow and maintain leaves. The trees are getting ready for the cold of winter. Frosty nights and less light cause chlorophyll to start to break down. The goodies in the leaves are moved to the trunk and the roots where they're stored until the spring. Okay. So where do all these other colors come from? Well, it turns out that leaves are full of all kinds of different kinds of pigments. And pigments are what make the colors that we see. And during the growing season, chlorophyll is such a dominant green pigment that it pretty much masks all the other colors that might be in the tree. But come fall, when the chlorophyll molecule breaks down, some of those hidden colors begin to show. Yes. Like yellow and oranges are a pigment called carotenoids. You know, like what you find in carrots. Carrots, carotenoid, you get it? Carrots, carotenoid? <laughs> Maples and aspens have a lot of that pigment. Now other trees, like this red maple, have what they call anthocyanin pigments. And those appear when the sugars in the leaf begin to break down in the fall. Well, I kind of get it, Georgia, but how come this tree started turning colors before most of all the other trees? Good question. Some trees do change colors before others. One reason is that water is a very important part of photosynthesis. So the lack of water, or let's say drought conditions, can stress some trees and cause them to change earlier than others. And some trees are just plain wired to lose their leaves earlier than others. The ash trees, for instance, are among the first to change. So that does explain a lot, but what about the conifers? They don't change color or lose their needles in the fall. What gives? Conifers have long, skinny leaves called needles, and they've got a waxy protective coating on the surface that reduces water loss. So they can better protect themselves from freezing than broadleaf trees can. And what that means is that during the winter, when conditions are just right, the conifers can still do 
the photosynthesis dance. Conifers still shed leaves or needles, though, usually at the same time as their broad-leaved friends. It's just that they drop off only some of their needles, usually the older ones that get the least amount of sunlight, and begin to lose their protective coating. Except for tamaracks and larches, which lose all of their needles in late October. These trees have turned all these beautiful colors, and we know what happens next. Fall, as in falling leaves, right? And then what happens? Of course, winter, and it's nap time for the trees. But how do leaves grow back in the spring? Well, trees also have to prepare for that before the end of the growing season. At the base of each existing leaf, there's a new leaf bud just waiting for next year. These buds are unique to a given species, so it's a great way to identify trees in the wintertime. And when the weather warms in the spring, the ground thaws and makes water available. The daily amount of light gets longer and stronger. What happens next? Well, those buds use some stored energy in the tree and presto, new leaves form and the process begins again. Leaves, they're amazing things. They're food factories, they're beautiful natural decorations, and they're fun, as long as you don't have to rake them. Bill, never around when you need work done.